Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today I have prepared two multiple choice questions for you. As usual, I recommend you to pause video here, try to solve each problem on your own first and when you would be ready you can run video again and you can compare your answers with my answers and explanations. And I also want to uh, warn you that uh, I recommend you to watch video to the end because at the end I'm going to give you some uh, explanations that contradicts with uh, those explanations that you may find in the textbooks. So, uh, here's the first question. Assume that red-green color blindness is sex-linked. A colorblind woman and a man with normal vision have a son. The son's genotype is, and here's the four answers to choose from. And let me use red color to designate uh, defective allele, or I would use the same color to designate the whole chromosome. So, uh, because female is uh, colorblind, that means that uh, her both chromosomes, X chromosomes, have defective allele. Because this is X-link recessive genetic disorder, and for female to be a colorblind, she must have uh, this defect on both chromosomes. And we know that male is uh, normal, so his vision is normal, that means that his X chromosome is normal and he has a Y chromosome that defines maleness. So now we build a Punnett square and now we would be able to predict genotypes of the progeny that going to be as follows. So defective X chromosome here and normal chromosome from the father side here, defective X chromosome here, and normal Y chromosome from the father side here, defective X chromosome from the mother side here, and normal X chromosome from the father side here, and defective X chromosome here, and normal Y chromosome here. Now let's analyze what we have uh, as four answers. And once again, I want to remind you that uh, we are looking for genotypes of the sun. So, uh, answer A, we are given two alleles, one dominant, another recessive, the same two alleles. And as you see, in males, 100% of the males uh, of the male progeny would be affected with this genetic disorder, and 100% of the female progeny would be phenotypically normal, those would be carriers. Once again, this is X-link recessive genetic disorder. Because males doesn't have uh, another normal X chromosome to balance defective X chromosome, and Y chromosome doesn't have the same alleles as uh, X chromosome. So we call males hemizygous. That means that even uh, when males has a recessive genetic disorder on the single X chromosome that they have, such a genetic disorder phenotypically would be expressed as dominant. So, uh, we, as you see, in males don't have two uh, alleles of the same kind, only one on the X chromosome, there is no another X chromosome, so we can exclude answer A. And, for example, answer D, we have here two X chromosomes, as shown here, and two dominant alleles. Males doesn't have two X chromosomes, so we can cross out this answer. Now we can choose between answer B and C. And, uh, as I said, a recessive genetic disorder in males behave as dominant. So, should we choose this one? Actually not because males are hemizygous, so this is not a dominant genetic disorder, as you see here, uh, dominant A and uh, A allele and uh, Y chromosome, so we can cross out this answer, and as you see, the correct answer would be answer B, we have recessive allele and Y chromosome, this is recessive genetic disorder, so the correct answer would be answer B. And now, second question. A man and woman, both with normal thumbs, 
have a son with hitchhikers sum, it is likely that uh, you have to fill in blank space uh, is uh, heterozygous. So what we know about this trait, we know that straight sum uh, is a dominant trait and uh, hitchhiker sum is recessive trait. So how it is possible that uh, people who is phenotypically has a straight sums uh, may have progeny with hitchhikers sum. And here is the explanation. This would be possible if parents would be heterozygous. So uh, capital A would stand for the straight uh, sum or allele that would uh, produce straight sums. And uh, small a would uh, stand for the uh, allele, recessive allele, uh, that uh, in homozygous state would uh, produce some uh, that we call hitchhiker sump. So uh, here is a genotype of one parent, and here is a genotype of the second parent, who is also going to be heterozygous. And when we build a Punnett square, we can predict. Uh, genotypes and phenotypes of the progeny. As you see, capital A, capital A here, capital A and small a here, capital A and small a here, and small a, small a here. And 25% of the progeny, as you see, would have a uh, hitchhiker thumb and uh, both parents would be phenotypically normal because this is a uh, trait called uh, straight uh, sum is coded by uh, dominant allele. So this explanation that uh, you can find in the textbooks and uh, as you see uh, correct answer would be that both parents are heterozygous. Answer D. But as I said earlier I want to give you another uh, explanation. Uh, actually, what you uh, told in the books is uh, not uh, what uh, real life situation is. Just take a look at these uh, pictures. So, as you see, here would be hitchhiker's uh, thumb. Uh, we call hitchhiker's thumb uh, when two bones make an angle that is over 50 degrees. So if we would extend this bone uh, in this direction, so we would see that here we would have uh, more than 50 degrees. So such uh, thumb would be considered hitchhikers. But as you see, there is a lot of variability. There is no such thing as straight thumb and hitchhikers thumb. Just once again take a look uh, at what we have here. And uh, as you see there is a many of intermediate uh, different variants between these two extremes. And actually here is another picture that demonstrates that uh, distribution of this trait is in the middle. So extreme uh, variants are very rare when uh, some is very straight and some is very bent and most of the people belong to this group as you see between 30 percent and uh, 50 percent and that means that uh, this is going to most of the people have intermediate uh, sum so maybe belong to this group and as you see uh, such examples as uh, hitchhiker sum that is used in um, textbooks uh, on the lectures of your uh, professors of the biology or genetics is not uh, really what is a real life situation is but uh, such examples is uh, frequently used because uh, these examples are very easy to demonstrate but on the other hand, uh, this may lead to some misunderstanding. Uh, some students may uh, come home and do their own genetic test at home, make uh, such a Punnett square like this, 
and they may figure out that uh, the appearance is not the appearance, but uh, the true thing that uh, you don't have to trust everything that you may even find in your textbooks. And uh, don't be disappointed if you would find that uh, both your parents uh, would have hitchhiker sum and you would have a straight sum uh, according to um, simple Mendelian genetics this is impossible but uh, really this is possible because uh, what uh, explanation that you have in your textbooks is just uh, doesn't stand uh, any criticism and this is not the only example I can tell you there are many examples like this for example, another myth that is used uh, in textbooks is a dominant and recessive allele that uh, defines uh, how your air lobes attach, whether it is attached or free. There is also the same uh, variation, just like you see here. There is no such thing as mm, attached and not attached. There is a lot of uh, intermediate variants. Another example would be, um, as you maybe remember from your textbooks, is um, widow's peak. So it's also said that widow's peak is dominant. And poor students may uh, also consider their uh, mothers in infidelity because probably their parents both don't have a widow's peak and they would have widow's peak. And this is also impossible in uh, simple Mendelian genetics if uh, we are talking about the only one dominant and one uh, recessive allele. So you have to understand that uh, these examples are just uh, convenient to use in lectures, but they have nothing to do with real situation. And professor of the um, University of Delaware John MacDonald uh, shows many other uh, very popular examples that is used in textbook that have nothing to do with real life situation. So these traits cannot be explained with existence of the only two alleles, one dominant, another recessive, and probably many genes play a role or many alleles play a role in many intermediate uh, variants between two extremes. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please write your comments, questions if you have any. And see you in the next video. Goodbye.